All right, everybody, welcome back to my channel for another video. Today, we're going to be talking about the former Rolling Acres Mall in Akron, Ohio. So I know doing a mall video is going to be a little different from what I normally do, but hey, I've always been interested in this place, and I wanted to make a video about this mall. So Rolling Acres was a massive mall for the area. With over 150 storefronts, it was built on 260 acres in southwest Akron, which is notably the home of LeBron James, and it's also just south of Cleveland if you're not familiar with the area. So there is a lot of information here, but I'll just try to hit on all the key events, as this place has seen a lot in its nearly 35 years of operation. The concept for the mall was developed by Richard Bushholzer back in the late 60s. After speaking with several retailers, and they expressed interest in building in the Akron area. He filed for building permits, and he began to clear the land back in 1971. The original plan was for a fairly small mall, with just 20 stores and one anchor, with that anchor store being Sears. So with the construction of the new mall, the city of Akron agreed to invest over a million dollars into the area. They would improve the roadways, along with extending the water and sewage access. So with that being said, it probably came as no surprise that city council wasn't exactly happy with the progress of the mall, as by 1973, the land still wasn't cleared. In fact, they threatened to revoke their permits if the construction wasn't completed within the next two years. Anyways, the mall would open in August of 1975, with Anchor Store Sears and other smaller stores such as Rite Aid, Claire's, and GNC. Rolling Acres was a beautiful two-story mall with the center court featuring a unique water fountain, palm trees, and several skylights. The mall was a hit with the locals and by the following year they would expand to add more retail space. They would add J.C. Penney as an anchor along with 30 smaller storefronts. Later that same year, they would add a three-screen cinema. 1977 saw even more expansion. They added another anchor store, Montgomery Ward. Along with that, they added a food court. At this point, the mall had enough retail space for 144 retailers. However, the Montgomery Ward wouldn't last very long, as it would actually be rebranded into Higby's. But they would add other stores, such as Lane Bryant, and Limited Express. So throughout the 80s, Rolling Acres is very popular, and the place was very well maintained. They would always upkeep the landscaping, as well as doing minor things such as repainting and things of that nature. So the place is a popular hangout with the locals. However, the reputation of the mall would be tarnished in September of 1986. There were two dead bodies found in the field behind the mall. They were later determined to be University of Akron students who have gone missing. It's not like this event was directly connected to the mall, and I won't go into a lot of details about it here, but this did make patrons second-guess their safety as they were shopping there. And to make matters worse, up until this point, the mall employed off-duty police officers for their security, but they decided to make some budget cuts and they hired a private security firm which didn't really help things any. So in the early 90s, a fight broke out in the cinema and several people reported hearing gunshots fired. Turns out it wasn't true, but nonetheless, it very much hurt the reputation. So no surprise, the mall is starting to lose foot traffic at this point. So anyways, a few changes in 1993, the Higbees became a Dillard's, and also, the May store turned into a Kaufman's. So by the end of that year, the cinema had turned into a 99-cent theater. They basically just showed second-run movies, but that didn't last long. They basically stated they weren't turning enough of a profit. Even with the mall struggling a little bit, they would put some money back into it in 1995, which would turn out to be their final renovation. They would add a new wing, with 20 new retail locations and a new anchor store, which was Target. So if you're keeping track, at this point, the mall had over 160 retail store spaces 
and five anchor stores. So the first real sign of trouble came in 1999 when JCPenney announced that they were losing money and they were considering closing their mall location. However, they would end up just converting it into an outlet store. As it turns out, they weren't alone, as Dillard's would follow suit just a year later. Anyways, in the year 2000, the mall would be sold to Bankers Trust of New York for a reported $33.5 million. And they would make some improvements right away. First off, they would reopen the cinema. Along with rebranding the mall, they created a new logo and they launched a new website. However, their tenure as owner would be short, and by 2002, the mall would once again be sold. This time the buyer was North Carolina businessman Haywood Wichard, and the price? Just $2.75 million. At this point, the mall was 65% occupied. This was not a welcoming sight, as Haywood was well known for buying struggling businesses and not really investing money into them, basically just buying them for the land. So this doesn't really sound too good for Rolling Acres. In fact, he was interviewed for an article basically stating he doesn't really have high hopes for the mall because of the high crime rate and the fact that there are other newer malls in the area. At any rate, things got really bad in 2006. That was the year that both Dillard's and Target closed. And with that, the mall was once again sold this time to a California-based company, for just $1.6 million. At this point, the mall had just 40 occupants, including Dollar General, Bath & Body Works, Mastercuts, and no surprise, GNC. The new owner would plan the shift away from retail, converting the unused space in the commercial and office spaces, along with the call center. But that would never happen. In 2007, the cinema once again closed, and things are starting to get pretty bad inside the mall. It was reported a homeless man was living inside of one of the abandoned stores. If that wasn't bad enough, he was in possession of $30,000 worth of stolen merchandise. By 2008, they shut off the escalators, attempting to save money. At this point, they had just eight tenants. So the writing is on the wall for the mall at this point, and on October 31st, 2008, they let all remaining stores know that they could no longer afford the power, and the mall would be permanently closed. The only stores not impacted by the closure would be the JCPenney outlet and the Sears store. They would both close off their mall entrance and continue to operate as normal. As far as the inside of the mall, well, it got pretty bad. There was a lot of vandalism, glass was broken, there were even bullet holes everywhere. Of course the copper wire and fixtures were getting scrapped, but things definitely went from bad to worse. A man was electrocuted while trying to cut copper wire from a transformer outside the building. A victim from the Craigslist killer was found outside, and a body was found hanging in the woods outside the mall. So yeah, things got pretty weird. Out in parts of Summit County this afternoon, but it was not your typical power problem. A man was electrocuted, apparently trying to steal copper cable from the Rolling Acres Mall. Firefighters found the body next to an electrical. And by 2013, both the Sears and J.C. Penney outlet had both closed. There was a lot of back and forth between the owner of the property and the county, but the important thing is. The Summit County foreclosed on the property in 2016, and demolition was completed in October of 2017. Which brings us to where we are today. Nowadays, the old Rolling Acres Mall property, it's an Amazon Fulfillment Center. Not a big surprise, but it was built back in 2020. Anyway guys, that's all I have for today's video. This was a really fun one for me to make, and I hope you guys found this interesting. Hey, if you have any memories of the old Rolling Acres Mall, I would love to hear about them in the comments. And if you have any suggestions for a future video, please let me know about that in the comments. And if this is the kind of video you think you might like in the future, please subscribe to my channel, 
and I will see you all next time. Thank you very much for watching.